afternoon, everyone. Today is Tuesday, uh, September 22nd, 2020. The time is 2.02 um, .02 p.m. Officially calling this meeting to order. Attending our commissioners, Duncan Brooks and Filios. This is our weekly business meeting. And I'm going to ask Grant to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, moving on to the consent calendar. I move we approve the consent calendar as listed on our business meeting agenda for September 22nd, 2020. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Aye, and the motion is carried. Payables list. I move that we approve the payables for the week of September 14th through 18th, 2020 in the amount of $891,237.08. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Do we have any changes to the agenda? Number two has been pulled. Okay. So item number two being pulled from the agenda. So we'll go back to item number num, number one, 2020 2021 Idaho County's Risk Management Program with ICRIMP, Insurance Policy Renewal HR. Cecilia, please. For the record, Cecilia Sweet, HR com uh, Generalist Compliance. So we are requesting um, approval of the county's ICRIMP liability insurance policy. And I've enclosed the policy, the schedule, and the summary of policy changes. There has been a 3% increase uh, to this year's premium cost. And so uh, for 2021, it will be $778,056, which is 22663 over last year's premium. So, and then the ICRIMP premiums are based on three factors, claims activity, payroll, and property values. And so the county has um, a $3,500 deductible on vehicle and property damages and loss and this year there are two primary changes to the county's ICRIMP policy. So the first one is under employment practices and liability deduction and then the second one is under cyber liability and so um, also we would like to have the board um, acknowledge and sign our memo so we can make two premium payments in the amount of $389,028 on October 1st and April 1st of 21. I do have Sandy Mosier and Darren Murphy on the phone along with John Getty to answer any questions about this year's premium policy. Okay. Any questions? Um, so just making sure the three items, the claims, the payroll, and the property values is what caused the 22,000 right. increase. That's okay. All right. And then um, Chairman Grant had a question. Come right up, Grant. Uh, yes. I just wanted to confirm because it's been um, brought to my attention that part of the increase could be because um, of the no before project. Um, not being in place yet in the county. Do you, can you confirm or deny if that is increasing our deductible at all? Um, that is uh, part of our premium. So uh, we are participating okay. um, in the no before. Right, we are. But um, is any of the increase that we're actually being subjected to this year due no. to any kind of work that has or had not been done on the no before? No. Okay. Uh, I have a question, Cecilia. When we talk about property values, you mean specifically county property? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Vehicles, buildings, contents, uh, boats, mobile equipment. All property. Everything. Okay, thank you. Real estate and, okay, other. Any other questions? Motion? 
Second. I move that we approve the 2021 Idaho County's Risk Management Program Insurance Policy. I second the motion. And I. Yeah, and it's and I guess I guess. So the payments have to be part of the motion. Okay. Two parts. Go right ahead. Uh, to be made in two payments. The first occurring on October 1st, the amount of $389,028, and the remaining on April 1st, in the amount of uh, April 1st, 2021, in the amount of $389,028. Okay, that works. Second. I'll second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Thank so you. we're renewing our ICRIM policy. Thank you, Cecilia. Thank you, John. Okay, so item, so skipping item number two, which was uh, removed. Item number three, renewal number five, memorandum of understanding, also known as an MOU, with the Idaho Military Division for Microwave T1 Connections for the radio network. KCSO 911, Colin, please. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Colin McRoy, Community County Sheriff's Office. Um, this is our annual contract renewal for our um, T1 network uh, lease from the Idaho Military Division for our uh, network link back to the trunking system core down in Meridian. Um, this is an annual renewal uh, agreement. Uh, increase uh, is it's the standard built in. Uh, they have a standard built in increase, which is uh, $623.48 this year. Okay. So it's a multi year contract. It's is that it? Multi year. Okay. This is since. 2008, I believe. Auto renewal. Okay. Contract. All right. Motion. I move that we uh, approve the renewal number five, the memorandum, memorandum of understanding with the Idaho Military Division for the microwave T1 connection and the radio network. Second. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Colin. Item number four, annual service agreement for fiscal year 21 with Motorola Solutions. Colin, again, for KCSO 911. Yes, Commissioners. This is, um, again, an annual contract uh, with Motorola for our break fix uh, service agreement for the 700 megahertz trunking system. Uh, same tier level of support we've carried for many years. Um, total contract price is one hundred sixty-one thousand one hundred seventy-two and thirty-nine cents, uh, which is a seven thousand two hundred thirty-five dollar and five cents increase over last year, and that is due to uh, newly added equipment coming off of its year warranty during this next uh, service agreement. Okay. Motion. I move that we approve the annual service agreement for the um, for FY21 with Motorola Solutions. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Motion carried. It's Colin again. Item number five: communication system and services agreement for remote nomad positions enhanced call works with Motorola. Brought to us by the CARES Act. CFAC-456, 911 KCSO. Go ahead, Colin. Commissioners, this is uh, an application um, that was approved under the CARES Act for uh, that funding as far as part as one of those uh, projects uh, capable of helping us respond to the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, this is one of the projects we identified that will help the 911 center um, in the event of needing to relocate out of that building, whether contaminated or um, needing to uh, have somebody work in an isolated environment. These are uh, remote uh, phone positions. They operate as a exactly uh, like sitting actually at the 911 center. Um, however, remotely and all we need is an internet connection to get back. Um, that's what the this is for four of them. We have two that we purchased with the with the phone system. So this would give us a total of six to uh, increase our capability in case we really needed to be outside of this. So the CARES Act is providing the funding for Correct. the additional four. For the additional four. Okay. Is there ongoing costs? There is there. This would uh, result in an increase to our annual maintenance, um, which. 
they told me in there, uh, of course, covered by the 124 uh, enhanced 9-1 fee continue on, which we can uh, definitely cover that with uh, okay. funds. And I, I just want to make sure the budget it, wasn't impacted. It won't impact general funds. It would okay. be 100 percent to the okay, good. fund. All right. Thank you. Okay. Motion for number five. I move that we approve the communication systems and services agreement, uh, remote nomad position, enhanced call works, uh, Motorola under the CARES Act, CFSAC 556 456. with KCSO. Second. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Colin. Item number six, request for the transfer of funds for volunteer search and rescue unit KCSO. Lieutenant Higgins. Lieutenant Higgins, for the record, uh, I'll give you a quick little history on what the VSAR unit is. The VSAR unit is a volunteer search and rescue unit that's comprised of about 70 members. Their sole purpose is to conduct search and rescue missions for the county and the region and to assist the sheriff's office or any other agency that calls upon them to help them during their significant event. One of the things, or a couple of the funding sources they get to, um, to operate is they get uh, county uh, tax dollars that are approved by the board, and, uh, and that basically covers the building expenses and operating costs for fuel and, and gas, and, uh, or natural gas and utilities at the building. The second source of income is uh, donations and reimbursements. Um, so the reimbursements are for searches that are completed. We complete a packet, it's submitted to the state. The state then submits a reimbursement. We also get some reimbursements for equipment. Uh, their main source of funding is donations. So this year they wanted to do a fundraiser and lo and behold we found out that uh, they can't do fundraising because they're not a 501c3, they're an entity of the county. So the board decided, or the VSAR board decided to form a 501c3 with some assistance from uh, uh, Darren Murphy, our legal representative. Uh, they were able to do that and they have an EIN number through the state. So now it comes to uh, how do we uh, transfer some money out of their donation account, which is donation funds that they've received uh, through private donors and reimbursements. So I met with Dina and, um, and we went through their current 2020 uh, revenue sources and um, I pulled out everything that was not labeled as state of Idaho, which is a reimbursement for a search or a piece of equipment. Uh, everything else was donations, and that total came to $9,036.50, which leaves a remainder of $11,109.30 in the VSAR donation account, which will still be maintained by the county. Um, the mission of search and rescue will not change. They'll still be uh, a, uh, an asset for us to use for search and rescue missions, which we had last night and this morning. Um, they will also be a support service for the Sheriff's Department and any other agency that covers. But they are now formed a foundation to encompass this 501c3. We won't have any say or, or uh, influence on how they spend their dollars. Um, that's going to be up to their board based on their bylaws, which my, my knowledge of that board it'll go towards the unit and to improve the unit for training and equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this request is just to authorize that transfer of the $9,000 and change from our current VSAR donation mm -hmm. account to them so they can open up their account and start this foundation. So yeah. you say you don't have influence, but do you have oversight? We have total oversight over training, um, the mission itself, um, and, and things like that. We just don't have any influence on what they're gonna use that money. But the separate bank account, like, is there going to be an audit each year? Yeah, for their bylaws uh, 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 will have an audit. They have two signatures per check. Uh, whenever they write something, there's got to be two signatures on it. The board has to approve that that authorization of those reasons. Okay. okay. Dina, did you want to chime in here? Well, I just wanted to make sure that once the funds are transferred, that the foundation will pay back the county for the right. um, formation yes. costs yep, that were charged right. to yeah, the I county. Just need to know how much it is, and they will yep. there was, the yeah. so there was two charges, right? Right, there were two charges. So we just want to make sure that those are covered. And I would recommend that maybe we get a copy of the of the bylaws and the formation documents, just so we know, as a county, what our rights and responsibilities are. Yep, that's okay. doable. Great, thanks. Okay, cool. Motion. I move that we approve the request 
for transfer of funds in the amount of $9,036.50 um, from our uh, county line item to the new volunteer search and rescue um, 501c3 account. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. I motion carry. Thank you, Lieutenant Higgins. Okay, item number seven, modification, challenge cost share agreement. agreement. Idaho Panhandle National Forest for Snow Groomer. Would that be Nick? It would. Good afternoon, Commissioner Nick Snyder, for the record. Uh, Commissioners, this is really just a simple uh, housekeeping item. The document does read modification of grant or agreement, but uh, it is no more than an administrative change. Uh, which simply updates uh, names and titles, i.e. me as the new program administrator, administrator and uh, uh, you, Commissioner Filios, as the BOCC chairman, and that all, that's all there is to it, just a simple administrative update for the Forest Service. Okay. I guess there are no questions. Motion. Move that we approve the modification uh, for the challenge cost share agreement with the Idaho Panhandle National Forest and Snow Groomers. Second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number eight, development and ground lease AAL-2020-900 with Riverside Exteriors, Inc. and our airport. Stephen? Stephen, you for the record, Commissioner. This is a new ground lease located on the north side in the area we're actually developing right now. It is $7,456.78 per year. Okay. Motion. I move we approve the development and ground lease AAL 2020-900 for Riverside Exteriors, Inc. and the airport. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number nine, fiscal year 21 renewals for our public defender conflict contracts with the parties of Anderson Cooper, Crocker Haggerty, Frampton, McGue, Mihara, Nixon, Palmer, Pierce, Riyadh, Riffle, Romero, Schwartz, Swartz, Walsh, with the BOCC. Very good. <laughs> oh, Leanna Kaiser, for the record. <laughs> so these are our current 15 conflict attorneys seeking approval of their FY21 renewal for their contract for next year. We had two conflict attorneys not renew. These 15 are continuing on. The only change we had in the contract is uh, clarifying the rate for the CASA cases. We added that to the contract, which was not included prior. Okay. That was the only update. Motion. I don't know that you have to read all the names again. You can just mention that as read by the chairman. All right. Uh, uh, yes, as read by the chairman. Or me. <laughs> I whatever. move that we approve the FY21 uh, renewals for the public de defender conflict uh, contracts as read by the chairman. A second. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Thank you, Liana. Item number 10, reconsideration. September 15, 2020, decision for tax deed sale for AIN 245621 with deed restrictions BOCC. Yeah, so we opened a check and um, approved the sale last week. However, the seller has then changed their mind. There were deed restrictions recommended by community development because there's a, a Yellowstone pipeline easement on the subject property. So they have um, asked to withdraw their um, purchase. And any questions? Okay. I move that we um, negate the sale of AIN 245621 and return the money to the Forsbergs. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Okay, uh, item number 11, 2020 election ballot capital crimes defense fund at large board member, BOCC. Yeah, so we uh, got this um, ballot in the mail. It is due September 25th, and it is to vote for one county commissioner to be the at the at-large position on the Capital Crimes Defense Fund 
board. Um, and out of all the nominees, um, I am leaning towards uh, Tyrell Tovey. Um, I respect him. He's Bannock County Commissioner, and they have about 87,000 people. And with the other um, counties represented on the board, I think it's a good number to be between the lower populations and the higher populations. So that's how I came and to that. which county is he? Bannock. Oh, Bannock. Okay. Yeah. Who are the other candidates? So we have uh, Kendra Kenyon for Ada, Bob Canal from Kasha, Shane Young, Jefferson, and Rebecca Wood from Lincoln. Okay. You okay with that? Okay. Motion. All right. I move. Oh, Bill, did you want to handle this? No. Go <laughs> okay. I move that uh, the board vote for Tyrell Tubby from Bannock County as the at-large board member position for Capital Crimes Defense Fund. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Item number 12, resolution 2020-62, update to capitalization threshold, fix assets auditor. Thanks, commissioners. Dina. Dina Darrow, for the record. Uh, you have before you a resolution to officially change the capitalization threshold uh, counted as capital assets from $5,000 to $10,000. Um, our fixed asset accountant is here to answer any questions. We've looked at other counties. We've look at, looked at cost statistics. Um, we haven't changed our threshold since 2006, so we felt considering the size of the county and the size of the assets that we purchased that 10000 would be a better threshold to reduce some of the minutia, especially around the budget uh, process. This doesn't change your policy of reviewing any uh, purchases that are 5,000 or over. This doesn't affect that. And we would also still track any assets that are licensed or uh, registered, such as vehicles, ATVs, that sort of thing. So this is just to raise that threshold to uh, the materiality, to raise that materiality to be more appropriate with the size of our county. But when you say license, that includes all of our computers and all of our uh, radios? It would be vehicles. Vehicles. So, okay. so our computers and radios no, won't be just, kept track of? Well, we can track them, but they won't be considered capital. Sure. We won't, in, our, in our accounting books, they won't be considered capital. Right, which is fine. I'm just right. making sure that you know a $1,000 laptop doesn't go home and never to return. So. No, and, and the departments do track those assets. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, does our auditor have a position on this? We feel that um, 10,000 is appropriate for the size of our county. We felt that 5,000 was too low. So I'd Bailey. I'd Bailey uh, and just other counties as well. Some have theirs up. Uh, um, let's see. Ada's is 20? Yes. Mm. OK. Um, Isaac Ohm, uh, Auditor's Office for the record. So some of the other counties we looked at was we looked at GFOA best practices, which the minimum is 5,000. And it goes up to about 20,000 is where they recommend. Uh, the other counties in Idaho by population, so Ada's is 20,000. Canyon is 15,000 with a useful life of five years, meaning that if it's a $25,000 asset, that's only going to last three years. They don't track it. Uh, Bonneville is 15,000 for equipment, 50,000 for land and buildings, and 250,000 for infrastructure, which is probably like road, road projects, that kind of thing. Yeah. What was Bonneville again? First line item? Uh, 15000 for equipment only. And these are all, um, as of their um, prior year financial statements, they all have them in their uh, publicly available financial statements, what the capital thresholds are. Okay. So what's the rationale? Why are we doing this? Or why are you proposing it? To simplify bookkeeping and to make it more, I guess, things cost more. And we have a lot of assets, and it's it's a lot of minutia that we're tracking, whereas we're looking at it from a more material standpoint. So one other thing on that, um, with the, the Dean mentioned the rising prices. So for instance, there's like radios that are tracked by um, like Lieutenant Miller or Captain Miller. I'm sorry, like when like the last inventory, like they track all those radios themselves. 
prior to a couple years ago, those radios were not capital anyways. The auditor's office never got involved in them. But, you know, the, the $3,000, $4,000 radio now costs 5600 as of last budget year. And so we're tracking all these hundreds of radios in the system that really don't have overall they have a material value. And, of course, they each individual radio absolutely has a value. But it's kind of like how we don't track firearms and things that are below that threshold. It's the same same thing. It's just getting that materiality in line with, okay, these are capital assets. The auditor's office needs to be involved to ensure that it's being depreciated properly, tracked properly, maintained, all those things, versus having, um, you know, 15, 20 different small items that, that really the departments are already tracking. It's just that, you know, having that double tracking for items that, after a few years wear out and get replaced anyways is that if that makes sense okay so currently you're tagging every item that's over five grand yep. mm -hmm. okay so under the proposal you wouldn't be tagging them until over 10 grand unless they're exempted uh, unless they're the unless they're anything that has to be tracked um so we have it in the language here it's uh items non-capital controlled assets which we already tag any things over a thousand for um, let's see, if there's management concern, a grant agreement requires it to be tracked, or if it must be licensed, meaning titled and licensed, not as uh, Commissioner oh. Duncan said, the computers. We actually don't track a lot of those computers, like the under 5,000 computers. I know IT has taken that over in the last couple of years because Leanna was able to um, get a lot of those older computers that were just getting removed and then kind of doing this catch-up cycle every inventory as IT replaces them as they go bad. Okay. Can you give us another week on this? This sure. is the first I'm hearing of it, so I just want to do a little bit of research on my own. Sure. You guys okay with yeah. that? Okay. Thank you. So we'll defer this to the next business meeting, which is the 30th. 29th. 29th. I'm sorry. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Item number 13, use of office space, uh, MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with the Idaho Department of Corrections, District Court. Carlene, welcome. Good afternoon. Carlene Berenger for the record. Commissioners, I'm here this afternoon to talk about a um, memorandum of agreement between the Idaho Department of Corrections and the BOCC regarding the use of three office spaces um, by the uh, problem-solving court staff, the mental health court director, uh, I'm sorry, coordinator, the um, drug court coordinator, and the DUI court coordinator. Um, the building is the uh, probation and parole building located at 202 Anton Street in Coeur d'Alene. Um, right now, it's a two-story building. Right now, the Department of Corrections utilizes the first floor and some of the offices on the second floor, but there are three offices that are available for um, the coordinator's use. Okay. And that's a secure facility, correct? It is a secured facility, um, and um, also, um, it is ADA compliant. There is an elevator that does go to the second floor just in case anybody needs to utilize that. So where are we going with this? I'm confused. I read Judge Mitchell's uh, letter. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing here? We're still moving forward with this. Oh, we are? We are. Despite the judge's concerns? Correct. And how soon would this take place? Um, well, I, I need, you know, signatures from the Board of County Commissioners, and then it looks like it goes back to the Department of Corrections for signatures. Um, so I'm hoping, I'm very hopeful that it, uh, the move takes place prior to October 1st when our new judges move in here. Um, they, the new judges already indicated that they'd like to move in on the 28th just to get settled and be ready to go October 1st. Okay. Where, where will the new judges be housed? They'll be in the low, lower level of the courthouse. They're taking the offices where the problem solving court staff currently resides. Okay. And that was one of the concerns raised by Judge Mitchell? Correct. Because of co-location with uh, adult misdemeanor? Right. And, and I don't disagree with that portion of, the, of his letter. I, I believe that probation should not be in the same building as, the, as we are. But right. we, as, as we all know, there, there isn't any room right now. So we're doing the best we can with the options that we have. We're considering this as a temporary move, mm -hmm. um, waiting for other options to come about. Um, in terms of the problem-solving court staff, it's really important for them to be in a secured building um, with, the, with the clientele that they deal with. Um, you know, many, many of the folks that are coming in are still um, on drugs or coming off drugs, and they're very volatile, and it's just a situation where we have to have something in place just in case there's 
uh, safety is at risk. Okay, so one of the concerns, and, and maybe this has to be ignored, one of the concerns that Judge Mitchell raised in his uh, email was, for example, and I'm sorry, I don't mean to be terribly graphic, but the sharing of bathrooms Correct. between, for example, or among judges and people that might, might have just been or recently sentenced. So we're not solving that yet. I, that can't be solved. Um, the, uh, Judge Van Valen is housed down in, in the lower level of the, of the uh, old courthouse right now. And um, uh, Judge Walsh is up on the third floor. Um, there is a public restroom there that she's that, that she can utilize, or maybe she can utilize Judge Christensen's jury room if that's not being utilized. But that's always been a problem. Um, probation tests their um, um, uh, participants in the bathrooms that my staff use, I use, and Judge Van Valen utilizes. Um, we did speak to Commissioner Duncan about it, and now there is a sign on the door that says, you know, the bathroom is available or, you know, unavailable if somebody's being tested in there. There are no other options down there. There's just a men's room and a ladies room, and there's no private staff bathrooms. Okay. All right. I'm done. <laughs> okay. Motion. I move that we approve the Memorandum of Understanding for the Use of Office Space with the Idaho Department of Corrections for their Anton uh, location. I second the motion. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you. I hope everybody was listening because this is one of the key reasons we need to build. One of many. Thank you. Um, okay, then. So moving on to item 14. Cancel the managed print services contract with Fortress, and uh, it's Kelly Connect IT. Grant, did you want to comment? Um, I don't have any comment, commissioners, other than what um, you know, I said the other day in the elected officials meeting. Basically, this is a contract that is no longer paying off, and we don't think it's of value to uh, renew it. Okay. Motion. I move that we cancel the managed print services contract with. Fortress uh, slash Kelly Connect and IT. Second. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Grant, just a question. Fortress was the company that, when they raised a little bit of a fuss about a year ago, were the ones that could handle the billing as we needed it, correct? Kind of made us think about it years before when we were out to bid, and they, yes. they were um, upset that we, they didn't get a bid. So, made a special ex um, point this time to make sure they're included in the bidding process. About, I'd say, two months after the contract was granted, they were bought out by Kelly Printing. So they knew that was happening. They made no effort to let us know that ahead of time. Um, it wasn't going well with Fortress to begin with, but when Kelly bought them out, it really went downhill. We weren't getting toners where they needed to go. Bills were not getting where they needed to be. So that's, there's been so much legwork by IT and the auditor's department trying to chase this down. We're losing our shorts and soft costs. Understood. Okay. So thank you. Item number 15, fiscal year 21, Kootenai County Taxing District's levy rates. Request for approval, tax year 2020 auditor's office. Joanne Connor for the record. Um, before I present the levy rates for approval to you, I, I would like to provide you some information regarding the calculation of the levy rates this year. Okay. Um, per statute, the county provided the abstracts uh, for the annual rolls, which is due the fourth Monday in July. And the state tax commission has till the first Monday in September um, to make corrections to those values that we provide. Um, all the counties first receive confirmation of these values on September 14th for our review. Uh, Kootenays County's value report had many data errors, and so the final corrections were received on September 17th. Um, as of yet, um, the assessor and the I, uh, IT department have not received the data for the operating property, um, so there is also room for change there also. Um, I did receive an email, a copy to me today, that says the state tax commission is having problems balancing that data. So at this time, we still haven't received that. Uh, so due to the time frame of receiving all this information, um, we've also had some other you know, state tax commission issues uh, with the web application. 
Uh, so these levy rates have not been entered into the official State Tax Commission website, which basically kind of gives us a temporary approval until they really review everything. Um, so the L1 that I presented to you today, um, those are cannot confirmed by the State Tax Commission at this time. Um, usually the, the software generates that report, um, but I have entered those into a previous form to provide for you. So um, this may result in the need for some amended levy rates. Okay. So I just wanted you to be aware of that. Um, and so I ask for your approval of the levy rates that we have um, at this time. I did make a couple comments on there, uh, which normally is not on there. Uh, we have two cities that chose to take the GPS I grant. Um, so I made a note on that for you. Um, we do have a couple districts that are non-compliant to um, the LSO, which is the Local Governing Center of Registry. Um, so on one of them, I have already done um, the part where they would not be able to levy for as much as they um, want to, what they normally would be eligible for this year. It goes back to last year's budget with no growth. Um, so on the city of Hauser Lake, I did make a note that if they do come compliant, then that levy rate would be the rate that's over there on the left in the bold. Um, and there is one more that I, uh, I believe will be compliant, and so I did use the uh, budget as they provide it. So that may be a partial um, amended rate, okay. too. Could be. A tick? Yes, that's Questions it. Questions so. for Joanne? <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple. Um, okay, so when, when, do you, when do you expect the amended levy rates to come in? Um, well, until we actually get the actual data in our assessors and IT have, You'd have to recompute to, to match those up to the tag numbers and, and the partials, uh, you know, the values, as always, are kind of unknown on the operating property. Um, but it's even a little bit more possible for amended if, you know, the calculations or values that I have, the State Tax Commission doesn't agree with. So it leaves a little bit more possibility there. Okay. So I can't really answer exactly when that will be. No, that's right. I know that um, the web, web is now working, and I'm working on that now. Um, it's actually by statute due next Monday. Um, the whatever that is, the 21st um, or 28th, 20th, 28th. Um, so hopefully by then um, we will know for sure, at least on my end, if the state agrees with my calculations. Um, but we would still be open to a possible change on operating property. Okay. Uh, and I take it um, these rates do not reflect the property tax relief that the governor is proposing, right? That's a separate line item, is that right? Um, well, actually, um, no, on the um, L1, um, under um, the two cities that have chose that, and I made that note there, um, those are the levy rates with the tax relief. With the tax relief With considered. the tax relief calculated. And that is Coeur d'Alene? Coeur d'Alene and Rathrum. And Rathrum, mm -hmm. okay. All right, any other questions? Motion. I move that we approve the FY21 Cooney County Taxing District's levy rate for tax year 2020. I second the motion. Aye. Aye. Aye, and the motion is carried. Thank you, Thank you Joanne. Public comment? None. 247, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone.